Hi guys. So the other day I started and I did like a whole video and tried to upload it and it didn't work. So <clears throat> we're going to try this again. Today I am going to be ironing as I'm talking. I think if I can do two things at once, that is what I'm going to be doing. I know that a lot of people are having a really hard time financially right now. I'm seeing it all over social media. I'm seeing it like locally. There's just different programs that seem not to be around or not to be enough funding um, that are around. I know the food pantries. Um, there's been some articles in the newspaper about both the Canadian and the American side where I'm at. Um, the food pantry is kind of being overrun or having some issues um, getting meeting the needs. There, it was more, um, the newspaper article that I saw was more about the other side, um, on the Canadian side that is, um, as far as struggling with meeting the needs and those types of things. I think that most of us either are or have known or are knowing somebody that is having a hard time right now. And, you know, it'd be very easy for me just to be like, well, I'm not one of those people right now, but I have been. And so I wanted to just give maybe a couple of separate videos of just different things that might be helpful to you and your households. So today I thought I would go over five um, first steps that I would take if I was even if I wasn't having a hard time before I was going to have a hard time, five things that you should be doing financially now to get kind of your house in order, if you would. Okay. And I am saying this from a perspective of I have been like all over the place. Um, we have had times when things were good. We've had times that things were bad. I grew up um, really fairly poor, um, like food stamps, welfare, that type of stuff. Um, I don't even know if they, it's called welfare anymore, but it was when I was a kid and the food was like a food, food coupon type thing. Um, and so... I have known a lot. I've lived different spaces of my life where I have like literally been homeless. So I wanted to, I hate to see like anyone going through that. And there are some things that you might possibly help. Just so, trying to give you a background of like where I'm coming from. I'm not just some like know-it-all, whatever. And even now, you know, we're trying to work on paying down some debt that we accrued from um, my son's funeral. And so we're working right there with you guys. We are, you know, right on this, trying to figure it out for our own households. But some things that, some ways that we have done it, we completely paid off all of our debt years ago. Um, we had zero credit cards. Um, the only thing that we owed was our mortgage. And now we're a little bit different. We have our house paid off, but we owe credit card debt mainly from um, my son's funeral. And the period right after my son's funeral, or right around that, time that we were living on unemployment so that was like our little bad time okay so let's just start off with you can't know where you're at if you don't know where you're at that makes a lot of sense huh so you need to have a budget so you need to write down every single bill that you have and um everything. I'm talking about like Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever it is. Write down every little bill. I don't care. I pay 99 cents for Apple, whatever it is. So I have like more iCloud storage or whatever that is. I pay 99 cents a month. That's getting written down on a piece of paper. So I know that I'm going to spend that. Every little thing needs to be written down on a piece of paper. Next, you're going to take that all those things that are written down and make a budget with those. Start with what you have to pay. So basics, food, shelter, clothing, those types of things. Food's kind of variable. Um, we can talk about that in a couple minutes. So shelter, write your mortgage payment down, write your taxes, like all those types of things. Transportation might be important. If you need transportation to get back and forth to work, then you might want to write down that bill. All those bills, write down. Now, you're going to be making a budget. You are going to be making a zero-based budget, but I have a couple of pointers on maybe how to bring down some of those. So make sure you listen to the rest of these tips so that you can hear those before you actually like tweak in your whole um, budget. But I'm going to go over this because this is like the budgeting number one, a zero-based budget. So <clears throat> taking your bills, you're going to write all those out and then you're going to write your budget and you're just going to start going from the most important to the least important and being like, okay, I can pay for this, 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 this. So all the things that you can pay for, if you are paying out more than you're paying in, things need to change, sweetie. 
I can tell that to myself too, because there's been times that it's like, yeah, that's not going to work. We need to make changes. How are we going to work this? Some people need to make and redo their budget every single month until they get this under control. And that's okay. Some people can you know have it set up for a whole year and it'd be the same thing. <clears throat> I can't do that. The reason I can't do that is because I have so many different expenses, different times of the year, that it makes more sense for me to have like a winter budget, which would include things like um, maybe heating or those types of things, or my electric bill goes up higher in the winter time than it is in summertime. And then I have like a summer budget where it is, um, my electric's lower, but then I have other um, costs from like home study type things, right? hay, all that type of stuff. So I like to do a summer winter type thing. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I'm reevaluating every three months. That's about how often I do it. Um, just to get in all the needs of my family. I find that works out the best. Um, you can do however works for you, but right now figure out all your bills and you're going to make a zero based budget. That means every dollar that comes out of your paycheck or your family's household income is going to have a dollar next to it. So if you end up having money left over, then that's what you're going to think of. Okay, I need to put this in savings. I need to put this over here and thinking of those types of things so that you'll be able to save more rather than spend more. Or it might be evaluating, do I really spend like this amount here? Or am I just saying, oh yes, I spend this amount when I really spend this amount. A lot of people don't even know what their food budget is or their food, how much they spend in groceries or how much they spend eating out. Or, you know, do you count that coffee that you spend every day <clears throat> when you are out or whatever? Do you count that coffee in? Yes. So figure out where your money is going. That's number one. You can't help any budget, anything, unless you know where exactly your money is going. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to look at that and we're going to decide what we don't use anymore. A big thing is, is sometimes just checking your email and seeing what am I subscribed to. Recently, I had forgot last year there's a thing called Craftsy and it's a place that you can sign up and they had this like deal going on that you could sign up for 99 cents for the whole year so you could learn about Craftsy. Well, I signed up for it thinking, wow, I have a lot of like crafty people in my house. They might be interested in it, told everyone about it. And then at the end of the year, I realized I had just got deducted $99 out of my bank account. And I called them up right away and I said, can I please cancel this, whatever. Honestly, they were great. They picked up the phone. It was somebody who had very um, clear articulation in their voice, um, which sometimes it's hard if like somebody is not and they're kind of jumbled and they're speaking. And they were wonderful. They offered me a deal and I said, no, thank you. We just didn't use it at all at this point in our lives. And she was like, okay, no problem. That will be reimbursed within 72 hours. So it's making those phone calls on those things that you're not using. That could be maybe gym memberships. Like how often do you really go to the gym? Is it worth it for you to go like once a month and spend, you know, set amount of money, like just for once a month? Or could you just go for a walk or choose other forms of exercise? Um, Netflix, TV, you know, internet. <coughs> what are you spending in those areas and can they be cut back? And sometimes you don't know if they can be cut back or not. Maybe it's the time to call around and be like, hmm, I wonder if I could have another, um, grab some water, another provider provide that at a lower cost. And just seeing what's going to work for your household better and just being honest with yourself rather than saying, well, I've always paid for this or always paid for that. I'm just going to keep paying for this or that um, is not the way it is. Figure out what you actually are using, because then that would open up money in other areas that could be more helpful to your family. Um, and then look in your emails, too, to make sure or and in your um checking account and make sure that nothing's being deducted that you're like, I don't know where that came from. Um, and if you don't know where it comes from, figure out where it is coming from. A lot of times we like to put things to the side and not pay attention to what actually is happening because if we don't understand or we don't know what's going on, like 
hey, you know, like I just did the best that I could. But you really need to know in order to get on top of things, in order to make it all work, you need to get on top of this. It's really hard. I'm a mom to 14 children. It's really hard sometimes. And it's hard to balance your checkbook. And it's hard to know where your money is going. But it's so very important. Okay, so the third thing that you can do is call around insurances. So we did this a couple years ago, especially it was the first time that I ever realized that it would make such a huge difference. Um, we called around, I was, we had two vehicles on the road at that time and the insurance had gone up really high. And from talking to people lately, it seems like the insurances are just going through the roof. I don't know if you are finding that, but I know a lot of friends that I've talked to, um, mine's not up for a couple more months, so I don't really know, but a lot of people are saying that their insurances are going up incredibly high and that the standards for the insurances are just ridiculous as far as like homesteading and what's a pro an appropriate building and not being able to get, excuse me, not being able to get like funded because they have a homestead and those types of things. Um, so call around insurances years ago we had insurance and then i was like i'm just gonna try this i there was actually this thing online that says oh put your numbers in and we'll find you the cheapest insurance and i was like hmm and it wasn't that much cheaper it was maybe like 20 dollars through this other company and i was like i wonder if i call around and all i could think of was like i was like i don't even know the names and then i was thinking what about that um gecko thing and then i was like geico that's the name i'm gonna call that and so they have, they're really clever though. Like they have this, who would think of like a uh, gecko being like insurance, but it's kind of like the commercials where it used to be like Aflac, Aflac. Um, it kind of sticks in your head. So it's really, um, or like the jingles, they really stick in your head. So you think about it. So I ended up calling Geico and I saved like $600 every six months on our car insurance or our vehicle insurance just from making that phone call literally like i was paying 700 and something this is years ago i mean now we pay a lot of money because we have a newer truck which is just oh and we owe money on it which is another fault do not buy do not buy things you need a payment for anyway we all learn from our mistakes and we're learning so Call around insurances and look to see what um, what you might be able to get as a better deal. That is, and same for homeowners insurance. Um, call around. I did not like Geico. We were signed up because Geico was going to be just a little bit cheaper. I think it was like fifty dollars cheaper than our current insurance. Um, but they had lots of stipulations as far as homesteading went. They wanted to like kind of label you as a farm, and it was really weird. But I don't know. That was like a year ago, so your place might be different. We have some used buildings and that type of stuff that they didn't really like. They didn't like that we had a high tunnel. Um, so just check those things out, but it doesn't hurt to call and ask. You know, half an hour of your time could save you oodles of money. Um, okay, so we have a zero-based budget now. We've eliminated all the junk out of our bud out of our all of our subscriptions and memberships and stuff that we're not using out of our lives. And we are going to call around insurances and try to get some money. So that's why I said a little bit just to wait till you did those. One is for the insurances, because if your insurance goes down, then you can put the new insurance in your budget. Um, the other one is your food budget. So your food budget can is an easy, easy, easy one, although it doesn't seem easy, but it's not a set amount of money that you have to spend each month. You can change that month to month. Um, and you can also change it lower and lower. Maybe you don't like eating rice and beans, but if you need a lower budget for a certain period of time, we ate vegetarian or vegetarian-ish. Like it was probably like 80% vegetarian. I think for two years, we ate mainly vegetarian type meals, except for on the weekends, I would cook like two chickens and then have the leftovers of those chickens over the next two, possibly three um, days. The kids are texting me. I'll be back. 
I'm back. So my kids are so sweet. I can see them like texting me at the top. I'm actually using my iPhone for this. I found I'm going to try to use my iPhone a little bit more and just see how iMovie works compared to when I'm using ClipChamps, which I'm really having a hard time with, and at least until I save up for a newer computer. So that is what I am doing. Um, so I could see on the top of it, they're not, um, some of my children are not home right now. Um, I had two children who were watching, um, our friends had some twins, so they were going over and helping out with the twins, and then another one was going to pick up pig food, so then they all got together, like, the one who went to pick up the pig food was picking up the other two. Anyway, a little crazy. So, I said if they wanted, like, they could stop. My daughter was looking for, um, knitting needles that have, like, the circular thing on them, and, um, so she can, so she can knit, like, hats and those types of things, and uh, she was at the thrift store and she found something that she thought that I might be interested in um, that I had mentioned because the room that I'm in right now, which is a hot mess, let me just tell you, it's a hot mess in here. I've been actually sewing all day because people weren't home. So everything else just kind of went crazy. So I have like laundry over there and toys over here and it's life and that's okay. So up in the corner, right around there, um, I want to try to put, we have a wood stove over there, and then I wanted to try to put, it's getting cold in the back of our room over there, which has a, a separate heating area, but I was thinking if I put like a wall vent that could be shut off up over in that corner that we might be able to push some of the wood stove heat out there, because obviously it's warm in here. I'm wearing a t-shirt and it's like seven degrees outside. Um, well, t-shirt, dress, whatever. Um, and anyway, so that was that. Let's get back to this. Okay, so making a food budget, um, the, I don't want to say like the thing that you should do because it's not the thing that you should do. I'm trying to think of like a good word that would say that. I think a hundred dollars per person per month is a good starting place. Um, if you're already doing that, then you can cut it back some, but I think a good starting place for most people is to try to do a hundred dollars per person in your family per month. Um, and some ways that we can cut back in our grocery budget, a huge one that I did not realize when I was a young mom is drink water. And it sounds like such a set, like for me and our family, like we've been doing it for so long that it doesn't seem like a big thing. But I remember like I would buy like cases of soda, juice boxes, ju like juicy juice, like 100% juice. But really a lot of that isn't good for you because like juicy juice and other juices, like it spikes your blood sugar. We actually use it for sweet pea to like bring up her blood sugar quick like that. And it works well. But should kids be drinking that like all the time? Like that can affect your behavior if you're going like spike, crash, spike, crash. Anyway, just a thought. Um, but drink water. That will save you oodles of money. Oodles of money. Um, my husband always used to drink soda. So I would buy him soda for his lunch boxes and it makes you healthier too. I mean, I think we all know this, but we just don't do it because it tastes good and then we eat it or drink it or whatever. Um, yeah, so drink water, drink water. We drink coffee um, in the morning and then in the afternoon uh, because I love my coffee and sometimes tea, but overall our drink of choice is water. Actually, even if we went someplace People will be like, oh, we have juice and milk and whatever. And the kids are like, do you have water? <laughs> um, so the next thing is stop buying all the prepackaged junk. There. I'm not yelling at you if you buy prepackaged junk, I promise. But it's a lot cheaper if you're trying to save money. It's a lot cheaper to make it yourself. Um, and also, um, as far as like ingredients wise, most of the time things that are prepackaged are going to have a lot more ingredients and a lot of those ingredients aren't really healthy. So stop buying the prepackaged junk. Now, how do we get through snacks without buying a bunch of prepackaged junk? Buy real food. So, um, you can buy fruit. Usually our morning snack is a piece of fruit or a piece of fruit with protein. So apple and peanut butter, banana and peanut butter, apples and cheese, um, something like that, or just a fruit, depending. A lot of times we have a high protein breakfast, so then I don't mind just a fruit for um, morning snack because they're kind of close to each other. We technically probably wouldn't need a morning snack depending on the day. Um, if we got up and did things early, then yeah, we probably would, but on normal days, sometimes we're like, 
finishing like probably didn't need one anyway but kids think they need one like all the time right they're such as my kids Okay, so no prepackaged snacks. Afternoon snacks, um, we did just have ice cream today. Um, Sweet Pea had her ice cream and then we had some leftover birthday ice cream. But normally what we do for snacks would be like nuts or cheese sticks or things like that. Maybe meat sticks, uh, some pepperonis. Um, they're more outside like in the afternoon too, so a little bit of like... Um, protein is great so we try to like focus more on protein in the afternoon and then like the fruit in the morning and then um, sometimes like when the days that my husband's gonna have off we usually try to pre-plan like some sort of something like maybe like gluten-free brownies or something like that we pre-plan like a like dish of something you know apple crisp or whatever it might be we pre plan something and then I've been putting a couple things in the free in the fridge or freezer for sweet peas so I can just pull those out for her individually if it's something that she can't have but she honestly doesn't really like all the low carb snacks so it kind of makes it difficult but that's okay because she usually just wants a cheese stick so I like make these beautiful things and then she wants a cheese stick Oh, well, it works, whatever. Um, so anyway, don't eat all that prepackaged snacks. Um, the same thing with food. Try to eat real food. Try to, like, just go around your grocery sh store. I think this has been, like, a thing since I was little. Like, you should shop the outside area of your grocery store. You really should. Like, get in there with the fruits and vegetables, the meats, the dairy, like, that type of stuff. Like, shop that is going to be, like, your main grocery shop. And the prepackaged stuff is just, like, icing on the cake if you want ice, icing. Um, things that we usually buy down the aisles would be, like, peanut butter. Um, what else? <laughs> Maybe ketchup. Like, that type of stuff. Like, we don't eat a lot of, like, aisle-type stuff. It's more outside-edge stuff. So, that will save you a bunch of money. And it's not fillers. A lot of times when we eat like filler food, what happens is like your you, your blood sugar spikes and then it crashes and then you're hungry again. Where if you're eating things that will like sustain you that are like high protein and they'll sustain you, then you don't tend to like be like this. So I'm finding, especially like now doing more low carb that I'm, we're eating more meat. Yes, but we're not getting as hungry as often. And if we are, it's usually wanting food food rather than snacks like sometimes I would rather have like a salad with meat on it than to have like a sugary snack or whatever where before it was like I just need more carbs I need more carbs I need more sugar okay so that's our life but anyway you can save a lot of money by not buying the prepackaged snacks and eating real food try to make your budget be a hundred dollars um per person Per month if you're way over that right now then just cut it back by like 20 percent and then again in two months cut it back by 20 percent and see how you can get down so let's just go over those real quick again create a zero base budget eliminate all the extras call around your insurances make a food budget and stick to it and then the last thing is going to be for people who have credit cards if you have credit cards and you have good credit now is the time to go and seek out 0% interest credit cards. I am pretty sure, I'm not like prophesying or anything like that, but I see the interest rates like going high on things. So I'm thinking that now is a great time to look at 0% interest credit cards because it might not always be around. And if you can get a 0% interest credit card, then go for it. Get a 0% interest credit card. Take your highest interest credit cards and switch it over to the zero percent interest credit cards but then you have to be purposeful be purposeful on repaying those zero percent interest credit cards so and those are all my tips there's different ways to deal with credit cards i don't know if i'll get into those in a later um in a later date but that's what i got for you and if you needed to do a couple different credit cards like zero percent interest credit cards if you could do that um, that would be great and then just make it a priority say it's zero percent interest for 24 months well take whatever payment that you have 
and or how much you owe and break that down into the 24 months and know exactly how much you need to pay every single month and put that in your zero base budget. All right, guys, I hope you all have a blessed day. We're going to come back. I think I have five more for you guys next week. And then I think I'm going to do a five the week after that. But they're going to be all different types. This is mainly like getting your household in order. So this would definitely be the first one that you would want to watch. The next ones are going to be dealing with small things within your household that you can save money. So I hope this video blessed you. If you have any ideas how to save money, make sure you link them down in the comments below. Thanks so much, guys.